And who were some strong influences on your career early days in terms of your own personal development? Well, look, I, I was lucky in that there's only two courses um, where you can train as a sports psychologist in Australia and actually one of those folded um, a couple of years ago. So there was um, uh, UQ in Queensland and Victoria University here and I had some amazing sort of academic mentors um, through VU and Mark Anderson, Daryl March and Harriet Speed were, were really influential and, you know, they're some of the, the really heavy hitters in academia what are some important things for young footballers to start working on in terms of mindset and psychology? Uh, what are some common things that you work with with younger athletes, I guess? And uh, what are some things, some skills that you can start practising? Well, I think um, the, the way I sort of conceptualise it when I'm working with athletes, there's, there's two areas that we work on. And one is the more general kind of mental health and wellbeing stuff. And often, um, you know, athletes, whether they be developmental or, or, you know, sort of senior high performance athletes kind of want to shove that to the side and say, no, no, just get to the performance stuff. Let's just work on the performance. But ultimately that, that little apex, the, the top of the, the pyramid of performance, you're not really capable of doing much there and sustaining it unless you've got a really good solid foundation around the, the general mental health and wellbeing stuff. So I tend to recommend people spend a bit of time there. And here we're talking about stuff like understanding your personal values and, and sort of strengths and things like that. Um, even, even having a good sense of your own identity, who you are, what you stand for. During your, your professional career, what has been some of your biggest challenges? Um, and then uh, what have you learned? Like, how have you grown from those challenges? I know. You were in the hub for seven weeks. I imagine that was a challenge, but are there other ones that pop up spring to mind where they were really hard to navigate through? And but at the other end, you you really grew from it. Yeah, and look here, I don't want to get too morbid, but I, I had a period of time. Um, there was probably eighteen months where three athletes in different programs that I work with uh, died, different circumstances. But um, uh, John McCarthy um, passed away when I was at Port. Not long before that, a young jockey, Caitlin Forrest, um, had a race fall and, and died. And then Husey, Phil Hughes passed away. I'd shifted over to cricket by then. And, you know, these are just incredibly traumatic um, events. Um, young people sort of in the prime of their life and, um, you know, sport tends to, to create these really intense sort of relationships. So being around and being um, the psychologist, for those three groups um, was incredibly difficult. When you're dealing with trauma, what, what are some good things to do in, when it comes to self-care? And look, all the really simple, basic things of, of health. Um, so, you know, doing your best to, to eat, even when you don't feel like eating, um, you know, you, you, you're stressed, you, know, you lose your appetite, um, sleep, I'm a meditator, so, um, you know, when you're busy and thinking and caring about everybody else, they're the kind of things that sort of slip off your radar. So um, I was really conscious just when I had a little window, for instance, with, with Phil's passing where I would switch the phone off for a little bit. Um, I would try and do my meditation in the morning, a little bit of exercise. You know, I, I like going for a run and that's quite a, a de-stressing thing for me, get out and sort of, nature and do a, a nice little run or something what about highlights of your, your career that you look back fondly and uh, that you're proud of well uh, just before we uh we, we came on I, I said to you um i was really lucky when i got into the olympic sports typically what happens it's a four-year cycle and staff sort of leave get to olympic games it's been a huge build-up you know really exhausted and, and leave so there's often jobs um, and opportunities in that first year or so. Um, I actually got in right at the tail end of a, an Olympic cycle, so I kind of parachuted in. Um, yeah. and the, the kayak team was one of the first teams that I got to work with, and we had an Olympic athlete in Hannah Davis, and she won a bronze medal in an absolute nail-biter of a race. And oh, I wasn't there, but I was watching it at home, um, and I was just – jumping off the, the couch. It was the most sort of thrilling thing. I haven't worked with an AFL team who've won a premiership, but, you know, you can imagine just the intensity of it's been this long build-up. You've 
all been working together to try and achieve this thing. And, and this was one of these races where it was literally like that and it was the last stroke they got across the line to, um, to win a medal. So, Which movie or, or TV series has impacted you the most and why? <laughs> Oh, look, and I'm, I'm going to show my age a bit here. I'll, I'll give you two. Star Wars came out when I was in, in primary school yeah. and it was the absolute hit of, I think I was in grade five, yeah. and every kid for their birthday that year, so 30 kids in your class, every you know every kid gets invited to every other kid's birthday party, we'd go and see Star Wars. So it's kind of like imprinted in my my brain i've been a bit of a star wars nuffy ever since and um last lockdown uh 2020 i got my kids into it so they're uh they're, they're sort of star wars nuffies um yeah, yeah. and then the other one i have to hate to say it but i'm a bit of a closet survivor fan and i think it's the kind of the games yeah the gameplay the psychological stuff it's almost like sport but you're in the outback there's all these you know interesting dynamics um, it's not always the strongest player that gets through. 